Hey, this is Rob Onsbach, and welcome to another edition of eHeroes. Today's eHero is Desiree Martinez, and today we're going to talk about social media. And for all those who are out there and are frustrated with social media, you know, hopefully myself and Desiree can answer all your questions. So welcome, and, and thank you for joining us. I am so excited to be here. I love this eHeroes thing, because I definitely live that E life. <laughs> you know, I, it's when I started this, you know, I, I wanted to give people a reason, you know, entrepreneur is something that, that they could learn from. And, and the E in hero stands for entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with, with me interviewing people just like you and, and getting them to kind of reveal their superpowers to others and teaching them how to do it, you know, it gives them an, an idea of how to be better at what they're doing as an entrepreneur, you know, as, as increasing their business, making more money, or having some, you know, fun on vacation. That's <laughs> what it's all about. Um, but, you know, with you, it's, it's, it's a little different because you're mixing a lot of your social media with your, um, you know, adventures in military. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that it was adventure that led me to starting my agency. It was a lot of frustration that actually led to this. So for some context for you listeners, so I run a social media marketing agency called All in One Social Media, where we help your business grow through better content marketing. And we are a mission-driven business because all of our social media managers are military spouses so that they're able to work anywhere that they get stationed around the world. Now, how this came to be is when my husband joined the Air Force in 2013, we got stationed in this really remote town in Texas. And while the town really like supported the military and like obviously we're very happy to have us there because you know, you're bringing in money and commerce and all that kind of stuff, they were not keen on hiring military spouses for jobs. So even things, not even like local jobs, like you know, working for like your local dentist office or anything in government, things like that. It was like, we're not even going to hire you for like fast food and retail jobs. And the, the stigma that's attached to it is because there's a couple of things. So military families move a lot. So you can't really count on them to be there for a long time. So it's like, you're going to invest this time and they're just going to leave. Then there's also things like, because when you're air force and the base that we're attached to is airplane driven, and the majority of the people that are at the base, that work at the base, are supporting aircraft. When the mission calls, the whole family actually has to answer, which causes us to be, you know, not the most consistent because a lot of us have kids, a lot of us have other things that are going on that interfere. And so when that happens, it's like, oh, I can't come to work, or this isn't going to be possible, or my child care isn't available, so I like can't come into work, and all these kinds of things. And because it kept being this continuous problem, they're like, we just don't do that. And so I kept seeing on our local Facebook community, all of these spouses that were struggling to get work. And I was like, well, you know, I've been doing social media marketing since 2009. And I was like, there has to be some way where I can bridge this social media skill I have with helping these military spouses. And so I came up with our agency model where we're subscription based, you know, exactly what you're getting every month. We work together to share your story and your voice. And then the military spouses are learning how to be social media managers, learning a vital skill that they can take with us anywhere that they go. Which is, I think is, is so cool because, you know, when, when I visited my son over in Germany, he stays in the army, you know, his, his wife would go on to these, uh, you know, community boards. Uh, I guess they were military for, for, for the military. And she could see all the, all the uh, whether it be job postings or, you know, what these families needed the most. And, uh, you know, I, I think that you've really bridged that gap between, you know, the, the, the spouses looking for work that they can't get off base and you've given them something that they can take wherever they go. It I, also allows for flexibility because they're making, you know, a fair wage, they're not having to rely on other sorts of take with you businesses. Like I think network marketing businesses are great if you can make them work, but when you're in military life, it tends to be a bit oversaturated. And a lot of people just like, they just want to work. They don't want to, to go through the entrepreneurial hustle that is required for 
any business, even when you're handed one in a box. So um, I, I find it to be very important. And, what, and what's so interesting about it, which is like a further like, kind of like where military families kind of get stuck in this loop, is I actually grew up a Marine Corps kid. And my mother had this exact same issue, but she didn't have the internet. And so she would get really lucky when like a DOD job would become available and like she had qualified for it because we've lived in Japan, you know, we lived in California and Arizona and stuff like that. So it's like when she was able to find work, it was like a really big deal and she like held on to it for dear life. Yeah, you know, I, I know with me, I think one of the biggest uh, problems I always face is the time difference between, you know, my clients and sometimes I have to remember, okay, Australia is, you know, 14 hours ahead and London is six and I, you know, Hawaii is, you know, six hours behind. And, and but with you, you got these military families that are scattered all over the place. And, mm -hmm. and I think that would become a log logistical nightmare trying to remember who's where and what and what they're posting and well, I mean, we have our own um, internal system to prevent a lot of that. Um, like, for example, our military spouses don't um, don't interact with our clients. Okay. Um, they have someone that they go through. So a lot of cases, it's me. So I am the one that's maintaining the client relationship. Because one of the things that does happen in military life, like I stated before, is, is things happen. Mm -hmm. So because we're a culture totally dedicated to supporting military families and what they have going on in the unique life we live, you know, at any given time, I have a military spouse that's kind of, you know, that could be in need of help. Like I'm having a baby and my husband isn't here to help me with this. Or, you know, my husband's been deployed for a year and I'd like to take a month off to spend time with him. Um, we're moving from the United States to a country or another country or vice versa. We're moving, you know, it's just, you know, my husband had a surprise TDY, which is a temporary duty assignment where he has to just go and I just found out about it and I just need help. So at any given time, the projects, the accounts can go to different managers, but the quality of the work does not change because we're all trained and in communication and we keep very extensive client notes and, and stuff like that. We're able to easily hand off work. The other thing that you run into, and this I think is a universal social media problem, is that you know your content can get kind of stale mm -hmm. when the same person is looking at it day after day after day. And so to keep it interesting and fun, not only for the clients, but also for our team members who are like, if I have to post one more thing, about chiropractic stuff, I'm gonna lose my mind. They we switch it around. Yeah. So the time difference isn't really an issue for us because we set everything on um Phoenix standard time because mm -hmm. everything posts then. So we're like, okay, well if it's three o'clock in Phoenix, that means it's six o'clock in in the East Coast and that's all we need to know. <laughs> you know, a few a few months ago I instituted that that you know all of our scheduling had a all the content that we created had to be ninety days out. What yeah, we, were we, we do 30 days out. Yeah. What we're so running into our, is all of our managers are current. Like, so this is being recorded in August. So all of our client, all of our managers are making September content right now. Right. And, and, you know, I, I found out that, you know, 30 days just wasn't enough. Cause if someone went on vacation, if someone did this, someone broke their leg, you know, th that 30 day gap just doesn't work. So I had a, I extended it out to 60 day. And then I'm like, why don't we just make it 90 days just to be on the safe side? But what I've discovered with 90 days is that you have to make it time crucial. If there's mm -hmm. stuff in there that's not evergreen, you know, you got to make sure, okay, is it, is it structured for 90 days out or is it more current to, to 15 days out? So we had to I make... Think, I think when it comes to social media content, there's three types of content. There's evergreen content that you can keep using over and over and over again that kind of doesn't go away, like who you are, what your business does, what your mission is, all that stuff doesn't go away. Then there's trending content, and these are things that are kind of topical and happening, kind of like around what's going on. So like right now, a really popular thing to post about is like back to school. Mm -hmm. um, depending on what your industry is, different, different things that are going on matter to you, like maybe like if you're in financial planning, like you got to be like talking people off of the Dow Jones ledge right now. You know, if you're in um, home, 
home warranties and stuff. Now's a great time to tell people to like, they should be um, refinancing their home because rates are the best that they've ever been. So it's kind of being able to pay attention to like what's going on for trending topics. And then the third thing is it's like, what's happening right now to you that is just so exciting that you have to share it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the content that no social media manager or social media agency really can ever do. And that's why I think it's important for an agency to support a business and like handle things most of the time. But when something really great is happening in your business, you as the owner should be sharing it right now and know that you're not hindering any sort of social media plan or anything like that because what's happening to you right now in your business is so exciting. It's important you should be sharing it Mm -hmm. calendar, you know, goes to the wind kind of a thing. Cause anything can be rescheduled. And so what if you have an extra post that day, I bet you anything that post will get more engagement than anything else that's getting scheduled anyway. You know, most of what we do is, is I always insist that at least one post a day for my clients. And if they have something important to share, fine, that's, we'll put it out for a second or third post. Uh, but you know, anything more than four posts a day, I think is just overkill, but Mm-mm. you know, you know, but unless you're my, on Twitter, Twitter. Yeah, unless you're on Twitter, but, stories. uh, I most of my clients are lawyers and doctors and, and for them, <laughs> they don't do that. <laughs> yeah, they don't do that. But you know, it, it's uh, over the last 10 years, I've seen so many drastic changes to Facebook. People are like, mm-hmm. what's going on? It's changing again. You know, but you know, I, I, I know that you made a post the other day. Uh, about the Facebook template and you know I I went to your page and that page is different than you know say the page I have set up Mm -hmm. let's talk about templates because you know you're 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 helping clients all over the place just like I am how do you know which template template is right for them so when it comes to Facebook templates so 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 you guys know so a template's going to be essentially like the layout of your Facebook page And depending on the kind of business you have, a Facebook template is going to allow for your page to cater to that more. And it's going to allow Facebook to know like what you do better. And the more that Facebook knows what you do, the more they can help you and make sure that you're targeting better. So I have a video and I'm sure that, um, Rob will put it into the show notes, but it's, there's 10 different templates that you can choose from. So for the all-in-one social media Facebook page, we have a video template. Now this video template is because I do a lot of live streaming and I do two videos on my YouTube channel every single week. And so that's my main form of marketing for my business. And so I make sure that what's happening on my Facebook page um, reflects those videos because most of the time with the standard layout you just have a cover at the top mm-hmm. and then it goes right into like pictures and and then you have like your post if you have like a pinned post all this stuff and so things that you've created like you spend a lot of time and in work into videos you want to make sure that those get seen so when you use the video template at the very top of your page underneath your cover is like the my top three videos that represent my brand the most that are at the top for you to view so you can get to know my business better when you visit my Facebook page. And so depending on the kind of business you have will depend on the kind of template that you have. Now, now being a small business doesn't mean that you automatically should be picking the business page template, but for probably places like a lawyer, it would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And then you can have your information there, your address, all that stuff. But if like you're a service-based business, there's a services template that allows for you to highlight what your most popular services are that you offer, pricing packages people can purchase and learn more about it from there. If you're a restaurant or a cafe, you want to be using the restaurant or cafe setting because it's going to (laughs) allow for you to show off your images and your menu. Because I think that when most people are searching for that kind of a business, there's two things that they're going to look at. They're going to, well, one is location, right? Can I get to this? And then two is going to be like, okay, what is on the menu? If you have photos that go with it, like forget about it. Like I, I literally did this yesterday. I was looking for a place to eat because I was at this networking event and I was just getting like super famished and I was like, I need food immediately. And I went to you Google and I ended up finding this really great pita restaurant because they had a menu up and the pictures up. And I was like, sold. Like 
you need to give people the incentive to be coming into your business and these templates are going to help make that easier for you. So I would take the time to go and find the, if, see if whatever template you have for your business is the right one. There's one for literally every type of business out there, nonprofits, um, venues, movies, movie related things like shows and stuff. There's, um, shopping, all of that stuff. So by taking the time to find the right page, it allows for you to perform better with Facebook and, and get more of that extra ump from Facebook that so many of us are like dying for right now. And I think templates are, are relatively new to the Facebook uh, spectrum because they weren't around a couple of years ago. Yeah, I, I, I will be straight up. I do not know when the new templates came into place. However, when I don't even know how I came across it, to be quite honest, but when I found it and I was like this, this a thousand times this, mm -hmm. and I did it for my page and I was like, well, I obviously need to share this because this is a way to grow your business to show off your better content marketing. So it plays right into the you know, mission of my YouTube channel and what we do with my business. So I was like, okay, well, I need to make a tutorial on how to do this mm -hmm. because we're all trying to find a way to make Facebook work for us as best as possible. And if Facebook is the platform you've chosen to be what you put like your social media eggs into, like that's that basket for you, then you should do everything you can to make it work for you as best as possible. Yeah. And I, you touched on that. I mean, you, the, the, the whole eggs in one basket. And I think a lot of people put too much uh, uh, credit to Facebook and not enough for LinkedIn. You know, you know, I think it's important to find the platform that is right for your business. I will never tell somebody you should do this and this is it because this is what works for everybody because that is yeah. not right. You need to find the network that works best for you. I've been a social media marketer for 10 years. I actually got my, okay, I've had Facebook since college and mm -hmm. I started social media marketing because of Facebook, because I was networking to try and like scrape up graphic design work back in 2009. And all of these grownups, because I was 24, so they were grownups, mm -hmm. would ask me, they'd be like, what's this Facebook thing? My like kids have been on it and I got like invited to do it. I don't know what to do with this. Can I use this for work? And I was like, oh yeah, you can use Facebook for this and this. And someone was like, Desiree, you should do this as a business. You should do like Facebook consulting and, and build pages. And I was like, huh, who's going to pay me to be on Facebook? Like, this is like where I would share like my drinking adventures with my buddies from college. Like what? <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, um, and I've seen Facebook, like you go through a bazillion changes, but the point of the story was. Facebook is not my number one way that I market my business. Mm -hmm. I use YouTube to market my business. Yeah. And I use video as the pillar for all of my marketing. And it is, has a home on YouTube and I've dedicated my time to that. So that's what I do. I know some people that are like all in on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I know people that are all in on Instagram because they've taken the time to test, which is what no one wants to do. Right. But if you want to have success, you have to test and see what's right for you. Mm -hmm. And when you try and force something to work that isn't the right place for you, you're going to get really, really frustrated. Yeah, you know, that's how I feel about Twitter. To me, it's, it's so chaotic. Same. You know? I only go on Twitter, like, usually when I'm at an event or I have a problem yeah. with, like, a specific company. And, it's and airlines. <laughs> I think it was last year I finally took Snapchat off my phone. I said, I can't do this anymore. This is just horrible. I never even tried. I claimed <laughs> my username and I did it a couple of times and I'm like, I am not cool enough for this. <laughs> I just like can't. I love Instagram stories though. Like I have a friend, she's a food blogger and she has, she's just next level good. And I'm like, you should use video. You should use live streaming. It's so amazing. And she's like, no, <laughs> yeah. she blogs and she does really amazing, beautiful photos of the food that they make for Instagram. <clears throat> and, um, she's always like to her, she's like, if you don't have an active Instagram, I think you're out of business. Yeah. And I think that's such a funny statement because my Instagram newsfeed not super active. I maybe post once a week there, but I get on stories a lot and I like, just like share my truth of what's going on in those moments and what's happening. And I like, it's,
it's whether it's business or family or travel, like whatever it is that I'm doing. And that's how I share. Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those kinds of things. You just got to find one, you should like it. And two, it should work for you. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, most of my clients are on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I always tell people, look, if you're going to do live video on Facebook, great. But if it's something that you can use, if you're not always, you know, acknowledging everybody who comes into your video, you can reuse that video and put it on YouTube, you know, optimize I it. You can acknowledge people all day and still put it up on YouTube. I think that it's, I think as long as you state that something is live in your title, that that's fine. But I think when you are recording anything on a live stream, you have to do it for the replay. Mm -hmm. Tim Schmoyer has a whole podcast that is basically just his live stream. Yeah. And he goes live every week on YouTube and it's how he records his podcast. And you hear him through the, like through it. Oh, Hey, so-and-so is asking this question. <laughs> da, 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 da. Like, and you said, he makes the questions a part of the show. Right. So you, even make that part of your live stream where you like you take all right let's hear from the audience right and then you go in and you talk to people like oh so and so said this and so and so said that i think people know going into a live stream that it's alive and two i think that even if you were to do it at the end of the live stream facebook and youtube i, I have the built editor where you can like cut it down mm -hmm. and then like if you have like you just do your your message and then in post you to, and then like, you know, at, this, at like 10 minutes and 50 seconds, this is when I start talking to my live audience. Then I can, I can edit that part out in the internal tool mm -hmm. and it'll work. Yeah, I think yeah. you could always try and talk to people. People are there because live streaming is amazing. I love live streaming. It's like my favorite, one of my favorite ways to create. It's actually probably my favorite way to create because I don't have to do all the extra editing and like scripting and planning out of things in the same way. I just find it so much easier to talk to people. Right. You know, I, I took uh, one of my clients, uh, I think there was 26 of his live streams uh, on different subjects and I had him transcribed and we turned him into a book. And now oh, he, nice. That's he, so gives, cool. he gives them out to his clients and it's, it's basically answering all the different questions that people ask him anyway. And now he doesn't have to answer him. He gives him a book and he gets the job because it's all authority building. So that's so smart. I am 100% talking about that on the live stream school. Oh, that's so good. So let's talk about LinkedIn, you know, because, yeah, you know, a lot of us have our profiles up and we mm -hmm. talk about the places that we work, whether it be we're owning a company or we're supporting a company, but we never tell people to go to our company page. Because sometimes it's not there. Mm -hmm. So I think company pages are really important. And again, I have a video about this they did with like one of my favorite LinkedIn experts, Michaela Alexis. Um, I met her. She and she's like she operates at my speed, and as I'm essentially my spirit animal. I want to be her when I grow. <laughs> but she talks a lot about in the video that i have of my site about why you should have a page versus a profile is because a profile you can still build is where you build your personal connections it's where you talk about like your life and what's going on and, and how you got to where you are and you share in your accomplishments and your inspirations by having a company page you can have that conversation there. You can still talk about your team members and their stories and how they got there. But then you can also like glow about the company and what you have going on. It's just like Facebook profile pages and just like Facebook business pages, except that unlike Facebook, where when you're, t where when you're talking about your business, it can kind of get tuned out because you're like, well, my parents don't care about that. Or like my grandma doesn't care. My friends from high school probably are interested in this. And so the stuff I'm like sharing is like for a really specific set of people that I'm, that I'm on my fit, my friends list. And, but with LinkedIn, it's all business. So you can talk about that there. And even if you are connected with your family, it's literally like, if I'm going into LinkedIn, business is happening. And people do seem to forget nowadays that in order to be, I think, a successful entrepreneur, specifically us who are 
have smaller teams or are solo entrepreneurs that you still have to be a person and you still have to be relatable and interesting and like flawed in some way, shape or form for people to like really resonate with you, to believe you, buy from you, trust you, refer you, all of those business words that we like to use. Um, but with the company page, it's really a place to highlight what you have going on. And especially once you get bigger, when you have multiple people as a part of your organization, when you can like create content in that company page, then your team can be your evangelist and mm -hmm. share that content to their connections. And then it allows for it to grow more. Plus then you also run into more options that LinkedIn has available for you. If you want to like advertise or get your, your content seen in more places, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's amazing. So mm -hmm. how, how do people watch your videos? Where do they go? So if you want to watch um, my YouTube channel, you can go to youtube.com forward slash MRS Desiree Rose. This is Desiree Rose. Or you can just search for me in the YouTube search bar under Desiree Martinez. And if uh, my Mrs. Desiree Rose is how you kind of find me everywhere on social. So. And they can go to a website. They can go to your uh, website. If you want to learn more about um, how to grow your business with better content marketing, but you are very much uninterested in doing it yourself because you're like Desiree, I have a business to run. Who's got time to keep up with all the craziness that those social networks are always doing? Just do it for me. And that's what we do. We already do it for you. Agency focused on taking that burden off of your plate, but still continuing to tell your story and sharing your genius with the world. And you can go find out how to do that at all in one social media.com. And if you're a military spouse and they want to work for you, how do they do that? You go to all in one social media.com forward slash careers. And that's where you can do your cover letter resonate and tell me about yourself and what you have going on, what your needs are. And then of course, tell me if you're a military spouse or not. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. So all the listeners out there, please visit Desiree, go to her Facebook, go to her YouTube, subscribe, learn more about her. And, and if you have, if you're in the military, you have a spouse that's looking, you know, to, to get into social media, you know, connect her with Desiree. And, you know, that this is why she's an e-hero. And, and, you know, and, and if you guys, you know, like these episodes, please tune in, please share. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Hey, adios. Bye.